This screencast shows an example of a somewhat more sophisticated Rails helper to give you an idea of how much work Rails can save you by implementing some best practices. So here we are having uh, just added support for deleting movies and there is this delete button that now appears on the movie details page. As we discussed in the book, this button was added by using the button to macro which looks very similar to the link to macro that we've seen before. So the question is, how is this actually implemented? What's going on in the code? So I've got the source of the page. You should be getting pretty used to uh, viewing the page source by now. And let's take a look at what's going on with that button. Here's the button down here. It's kind of hard to read, so we're going to turn on wrap long lines in Firefox. So let's map what's going on in the Haml to what's going on on the page. The first argument to button to is just the name of the button that's going to be displayed. Not much mystery there. The second argument is the URI that the button is going to submit to. So the thing to realize here is that, as discussed in the text, the button is actually a miniature form that is self-contained. Now since the goal of this button is to delete a movie, looking back at our old friend Rake Routes, when we want to delete a movie, we have to provide the delete HTTP method, and we can use the movie path with the movie's ID to indicate which movie is to be deleted. If we look at the Hamel markup, here is movie path with the ID of the movie that's being displayed in this view template. Method delete specifies that the delete HTTP verb should be used for the submission, and looking over at the HTML, here's our little self-contained form. It's going to post. It's going to post to slash movie slash five. And again, looking at rake routes, slash movie slash ID does in fact, whoops, does in fact correspond to destroy. But why is it that the, the form is going to use the post method, but we need the delete method? Well, as we described in chapter two, browsers actually don't implement any other methods besides get and post. So Rails has a mechanism whereby it provides a hidden input saying what the method really ought to be, and it's going to get converted to that method for us by the time our controller action is, uh, is ultimately called. So from our point of view, we can believe that the delete verb is really the one that's going to be used with the HTTP method. So this is pretty interesting. We have a single line that is going to generate a self-contained form. We've been able to use a URI helper to specify what action is going to be triggered by submitting that self-contained form. And there's a little bit of Rails machinery, uh, almost like magic here, that is going to convert the browser's post method, which is the only thing the browser knows how to do, into the delete method, which is the one that we really want. The last little bit is this confirmation box that says, are you sure? And if you recall, when we delete a movie, the effect of this is to actually pop up a confirmation dialog that would allow us to cancel this action. Now, we haven't learned about JavaScript yet, but what's actually going on here is that Rails is making use of some simple JavaScript code to pop up that box and make sure that unless you hit OK on the box, the action is going to be avoided. And without going into the details of how this works now, because we haven't learned JavaScript yet, uh, we could take a look at the documentation. Here we are at API Ruby on Rails.org. We've been here before, and we're going to look at the documentation for button to. And sure enough, it tells us that if we specify confirm, it will use some JavaScript to prompt the user to make sure this is really what they want to do. We're going to learn in, in chapter six how to write JavaScript like this for ourselves, but for the moment, what we've seen is the button to helper, even though it looks just like link to and allows us to specify the action in the same way, uh, actually has a much more sophisticated side effect in terms of the HTML that it creates because the method has to be postable using uh, the special HTTP verb delete. We'll see more examples of methods like this as we go on, but the theme here is make life easy for the programmer and make the methods resemble each other and be as readable as possible, even though what they do under the hood could be quite different.